Hey, everybody. Welcome to our midweek message of encouragement. Um, this has really turned into an opportunity for me to just uh, share what God's been doing in my heart and my life through this season, and hopefully that has encouraged you uh, as you participate in this during this time uh, that we all find ourselves in. And one of the things just really this week that God has been really pressing on my heart as we go into this Easter season, as we think of actually this coming Sunday, uh, kicking off Passion Week, um, it's, it's just felt different. And one of the, the passages that God really in the last couple of days has been uh, speaking to me about is in 2 Timothy, and it's 2 Timothy 4.2. And 2 Timothy 4.2 really when we see 2 Timothy, it's written to this young pastor named Timothy, who Paul has personally mentored and developed. And this young pastor is navigating through just big decisions and, and working through a lot of challenges that being a pastor presents. And so Paul, in fact, in 2 Timothy being the last recorded writings we have from Paul um, before his death, he's writing to this young pastor. And he says this in 2 Timothy 4.2. He tells him to do this, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. Okay, so, so but the part here that's really been working in my heart, my life, is where he says, not just preach the word, but, but he says, be ready in season and out of season. Be ready in season and out of season. Now, what does that mean? Be ready in season and out of season. To preach the word and to be ready to do so in season and out of season. And that's what I've been really working through um, because when we think about what it's alluding to when it says in season or out of season, uh, it, it's, it's talking about those times when it seems effective and those times when it seems non-effective. Right, So being in season would be, man, this is an effective time. This is a, an opportune time. And being out of season or in the off season would reflect a time where we would say, this isn't a really effective time. This isn't an opportune time uh, to share the gospel, the hope that lies uh, within us. And, and so my question is, how do we define and determine whether we're in uh, the in season time or the out of season or the off season? And, and I, as I was reflecting and thinking about that, most of the time, it's my feelings and my circumstances that dictate and define that. And, and if you think about it, because when my circumstances, when things are aligned or are aligning themselves around my life, around my influence, around the people that I come into contact with, when you think about your feelings, like, like sometimes my feelings just feel really strong, right? They feel like, like, man, I can do this. I feel confident. I feel like God's working. Um, and, and all these things are, are helping me. And so when I find that my feelings and my circumstances are aligned, when it comes to sharing my faith um, and being bold and brave like I like I I find that that's easy I I'm courageous I'm I'm able to take these steps of faith because I feel like things are working in my favor for me to be effective it feels like I'm in in season and and, and so I I look at that but then when I when I look at the times when uh, my feelings um aren't there or when I look around at my circumstances and and I feel like they're actually working against me not helping me I'm quick to then label those times as my off season or that, that it's not an in season time for me. And I also find during those times, during those moments, during those seasons that I am silent. I'm not as brave. I'm not as bold. I don't pick up on certain opportunities that God places in front of me because just overall my view is, this just isn't the in season, God. This isn't the time. And I justify it, right? I justify it because I use words that I think we all use, like the timing's just not right. Right? Like it's just, it's just not the right time. And, and so, you know, we we take ourselves to this place uh, of the off season. And and whenever you travel to like a resort or a particular part of the world that uh, is a tourist destination, they have their peak season and they have their off season. And when we start to take our mindset and operate off of our circumstances and our feelings sometimes, and we, and we turn those into uh, a place that drives how we share our faith, um, we, without knowing it, create 
these in-season times where we peak, but we also then create off-season times. And just like a resort, when, when it's off-season, that's when the cheap deals are. That's when nothing's really happening. And in our lives, when we define a season that we're in as an off-season, there's not fruit during that time. We, we take ourselves essentially out of the game because we say this just isn't that time. And, and, and we justify it. Remember, like, like and, and here's the thing that's, that's problematic with this approach <laughs> that God's been working with me on, is when you look in the Bible— at, at the at the times that people would have labeled uh, their their times with God as being in the off season or or a non opportune time, uh, when you think about those times that we read about throughout the Bible, um, what we see is those actually are the times that end up becoming the most fruitful. So, like when when you look at historically at, at miracles um, and and just the settings, like what. <laughs> think about what always preceded the miracles. Like what was always before the miracles, right? Like, like it was times of intense uh, emotional turmoil and despair that these people would rely on God. They would cry out to God. They would go, what do we do, God? And, and that's then when God would operate and do something incredible, something miraculous. And we all want the miracle. We all want that, but we don't want to be in the position right before that. But the reality is the position right before that wasn't the off season. It was actually a posture in a place where God was going to do something incredible in. And, and, and so I, I think for us, and, and we see that all throughout scripture and up, up into, you know, what we just read with Paul and, and Paul modeled this all throughout his writings. You hear him talking about um, how God is working and he's working even through the suffering and how Paul even talks about how he wouldn't change that because he's seen all that God is doing in these unideal seasons to the point where in 2 Corinthians 12 10 Paul says for the sake of Christ then I am content with weaknesses insults hardships persecutions and calamities like those words all align with how some of us feel right now. But then he says this, and this, this was an instrumental verse for me coming to know Jesus. He says, for when I am weak, then I am strong. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Now, how, how does he say that? Well, well, he says that because he's living it. He's experienced that these seasons that we typically label as off seasons or unopportune times, Paul has seen By having the mindset of, I'm always in season with God, he has seen God work and work even greater in those times that we would label as off seasons. And so because he's seen that, because he's experienced it, he says, listen, I've known and seen that that when I'm actually at that place of despair, in my weaknesses, in my distresses, in these persecutions, I'm actually, because of God, at my strongest point. And when you look at like just farming, right? Like when we think of seasons, right? And, and, and we naturally gravitate towards thinking about farming. Like a farmer utilizes the different seasons in different ways in order to experience the greatest harvest, right? There's not just like this off season. Have, I mean, have, and I want you to think about this, how it relates to us and relationships. Like, um, have you ever had an incredible life-changing conversation with someone when you weren't expecting it or when you weren't like feeling it? Like you were in this conversation, you're like, I don't really, I'm not feeling this conversation, but all of a sudden God does something and you go, oh my goodness, like God is working even in spite of that. And, 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 you know, I, I guess part of the things that part of the reason I want to talk about this uh, more is just because this is what's happening right now, like in my life, like I, I, I find that I'm having to really press in because I maybe don't feel it. I maybe don't uh, want to have certain conversations right now with people. Um, and, and the problem with that mindset by operating off of that is we're actually uh, in danger of, of projecting this season we're in that we've labeled an off season. We project that on other people. In other words, because I'm not feeling it. I'm not really uh, in this place being ready for God to work. I then negate the reality that maybe he just wants to use me even right now in spite of that feeling to reach someone. Um, and, And because when I say, oh no, I'm not feeling it, or this just isn't that time, I'm actually, um, operating outside of the will of the Holy Spirit. 
because I'm dictating what is the in season or the out of season. And and here's the reality. God not only knows when's the best time for you to be most effective, but he also knows when other people will be the most receptive. And so I need to be, according to this, I need to be proactive in preaching the gospel, regardless of how I feel about my season, my circumstances, regardless of all that, I have to be proactive in that. Knowing that God wants to work in this season, knowing that there's something that that I may say that's exactly what someone may need to hear. You know, Proverbs 15, 23, it says, to make an apt answer is a joy to a man. And this is what's really powerful. It says, and a word in season, how good it is. A word, a message in season, how good, how empowering that is. And many of us have experienced a timely word or message that was critical for the season that we were in. And and sometimes it's even something you've maybe heard a thousand times, but for whatever reason, in the season you found yourself in, it was exactly when you needed to hear it. And it was exactly when you were ready to respond to it. And many times those were times when we thought we were in an off season. You know, I've, I've personally been wrestling uh, through this because of Easter. And Easter for us here at Ecclesia, we had huge plans. And I was so excited as I thought about and prepared to present the gospel to a wider range of, of people from all these different backgrounds. And, and, and so excited uh, for me thinking we're going into a time of incredible harvest, of reaping the harvest uh, spiritually. And, and then through all of this and COVID-19, now I'm battling the thoughts of feeling like, well, we're actually entering into a drought during Easter versus reaping this incredible harvest. And that's why God has been reminding me of 2 Timothy 4, 2, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. In other words, be ready and be willing and preach the word and and, and don't label this time, although it hasn't worked out how I thought or had hoped. That doesn't mean it's off season. That doesn't mean that God can't work just as much or even greater than he would have if we would have done Easter at Matthew Night Arena. And he really like nailed me with this this week. I had an incredible... Uh, uh, life-changing, I would say, experience with my oldest son. Um, I was tired uh, the other night, and my son and I had been talking about just just different things like baptism and, and those type of things and, and talking about salvation. And, and I was laying down with him, um, and I was tired. And I, and I honestly was just like, don't fall asleep, because I, I struggle falling asleep when I try and lay down with my boys to help them fall asleep. And, and I was just trying to stay awake, and he, and he started wanting to have this conversation with me. And, and he started having the conversation about how he wanted to receive Jesus as his Lord and Savior. He wanted to invite Jesus into his heart. And I actually found myself, as he was saying this, going, I'm so excited about this, just not right now. And I want to have this conversation later. And it was crazy how I was labeling that time as kind of an off-season moment. Like, I want to have this conversation just, you know, right now, I don't know, and and it was like, man, God was just hammering this, like, like have this, con- like, this is the time right now. It's not ideal. It's not how you pictured it in your mind, in your heart, this moment with your kid receiving Jesus, but, but have the conversation now. And so we had this conversation and my son literally asked Jesus into his heart right there. And, and I'm, I, and I'm, it blew my mind. And I was so reminded of this verse to be ready in season and out of season and stop defining What qualifies as in season and out of season? Give the season to God and then preach the gospel, preach the word, be ready, utilize the platforms, utilize the conversations that you're going to have right now that God is going to use to reach someone with the hope that only he can offer. And just maybe through this season that you've labeled the off season, just maybe God's going to redefine it as in season for you. And maybe, just maybe, he's going to bring to mind, he's going to bring to words, he's going to bring the gospel, and he's going to utilize you to reach someone who who has never been reached before. And it's going to happen as a result of you just shifting your mindset going, no, 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 God wants to do something incredible right now. It's in season for God. It's not off season. And we're entering into Passion Week this, this Sunday. I want to encourage you. Let's have that passion. Let's reach people. 
and be ready to talk about the hope that lies within us. God bless you. We'll see you next week.